Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment, research methodology and several other topics on my channel The Geo Ecologist. Now we are going to start this introduction to population geography and this series is going to continue for some time. So in today's session on population geography, in the first lecture we are going to learn about that what is the nature, scope, approaches and characteristics of population geography. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and keep sharing the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about this nature and scope of population geography. Now first of all it's very important to understand what is this population geography all about. So etymologically if you observe population geography is simply implying to an investigation, an inquiry into humans and covering of the earth and its various facets. It means what? Population is about human population here what we are concerned and human population has different patterns in terms of their numbers, in terms of their performances, their different facets, their settlements and several other topics that we are going to look into future population geography lectures as well. So we observe that it is in reference to the physical as well as the cultural attributes of population that we look into when we say population geography. Now population geography is strictly concerned with geographic organization of population. And what does it mean? Geographic organization. It means we are talking about not just the statistics, not just the numbers, but we are looking into their spatial dimension, in their aerial dimension, in their uniqueness of the patterns and several other topics. Right. So it means that how and why this matters to the society. What is the usage of this population geography that we also need to learn. So if you look into the past, the work of late French social theorist, if you have observed Michel Foucault, he examines this idea of population geography and he talks about the social body, that is a term, and also the populousness. Now it's important to understand the population geography looked by geographers is different and by social theorists, sociologists is a little different, right? Where the idea of geography students or geography scholars would be more concerned with the spatial pattern, the spatial dimension the aerial differentiation for that matter. So what you observe here is that the concept of population becomes a little newer concept and in 18th century it came up as a subject matter. Further it grew and when university system had the subject called geography, later on in 19th and 20th century population geography was added as one of the important subject matters. Now if you observe the major theories started 1798 Malthusian theory of population, then 1848 Marxian theory and then further in 1945 the Nottestans modern theory or demographic transition theory. So if you have not watched these videos on models and theories in human geography, you can go to the playlist and observe these theories. Now if there is a timeline from 18th century to 20th century if you observe here, right? That's how we see the journey of population geography as a subject matter. Now if you're concerned about the nature of population geography, it's important to note these two important natures. One is the descriptive nature, the chorological nature, where populations are found, how the size and composition of these population is regulated by the demographic processes like fertility, mortality, migration and several others. And the second one is the understanding, the linkages, right? Where these patterns of population mean for economic development, ecological change, social issues and several others. Now these are the two important building blocks or two important verticals if you observe in population geography as its prime nature, right? Now let's elaborate furthermore and look into what is the difference between demography and population geography. Are they similar? Are they equal? Or are they something different? Now if you observe the simply study of population is also sometimes referred as demography or demographic studies. But what is population geography then? So if you observe here, now remember demographics and spatiality, if they are combined, then it becomes population geography. It means that the roots of demography is basically these fertility and mortality and several other statistics. But what about population geography? When you add statistics to space, that's when it becomes population geography, right? So population studies is often used to describe 
other approaches looking at population issues or challenges including non-statistical approaches that's important to consider here so population geography is what in simple way is the geography of study of population right it's this geographical study of population with an emphasis on locational attributes and spatial processes that's where important nature is concerned so population geographers do what what do people who are studying population geography they are concerned with what processes so the society around them the structure of population and how it changes the dynamism through birth rates death rates migrations and several others so what impact it has on the space how does it align itself is it pocketed into a particular center is it widely distributed is it a linear pattern of population what do you observe how population is placed on a space what are the locational attribute added to it these are the things that we learn in population geography now looking into a little of the scholarship around population geography so remember glenn thomas trivatha famously known for the climatic classification was primarily also a population geographer and this 1953 association of american geographer lecture was very famous where he addressed that population geography is simply understanding the regional differences the uniqueness the aerial differentiation in the theme of geography in terms of its population that's what he said in 1953 right so broadly speaking the concern of population geography if you observe is one point historical one point dynamics and the next is qualities combining these three becomes the totality of the subject matter of population geography so remember we're talking about population geography and its dimensions so one is simply population then is physical earth and then is cultural earth which makes together the components of geography so that's how we learn from the trivatha's explanation of how aerial differentiation in population geography is represented now if you look here further the book called geography of population world patterns published in 1969 this was published by trivatha himself now this book is one of the important pivot blocks if you want to study population geography and while the first included geographical account of population remember it has two parts the other part the second part incorporated the characteristics of population for example biological characteristic social characteristic cultural and economic characteristic so this kind of approach was given by trivatha and further more people advanced more scholars added up in india also we had a definite path in terms of population geography studies so now let's look further there is another scholar called zelensky you must have heard about zelensky model so zelensky in 1966 defines population geography in a very specific manner a science that deals with the ways in which geographic character of places now here is the catch geographic character of the places is formed and in turn reacts upon a set of population phenomena that vary within it and both through space and time it means what population does not just vary or is dynamic in the particular space but also between spaces right where migration patterns are very important movement of people makes sense right so the publication of two works if you observe population analysis in geography by woods in 1979 and a population geography by jones in 1981 initiated a discussion on the need to reorder the emphasis in population geography so that's where the emphasis later on only came into spatial demography not just demography earlier population was more about the quantity it was just about statistics which was majorly the impact of quantitative revolution in geography if you know if you have studied geographical thought you understand that what happened in 1950s and 60s was more emphasis given on the derivatives on the science on the positivistic outlook on the quantitative aspects of population but later on if you observe woods and rees in 1986 redefine reorder the concept and further what we see is now it was more about the mortality fertility and migration as well as the dynamics and distribution as well as linkages to spaces that's what we learn in population geography so what we observe some key research poles in population geography between 50s and 70s now if you observe describing demographic structure describing demographic change explaining demographic change and lived words and cultural systems were the major themes made the research poles in population geography and most of the approaches if you observe it was empiricist approach direct observation approach aggregation right and positivistic approach if you observe was dominating 
not more of humanist approach until 1970s. So this was the major idea and all these theories, concentration, segregation, density, flows, balancing, transition theory, diffusion models, all these things were dominating in population geography in the first half as the inherent characteristic or building blocks of population geography. Now what happened? There were diverse approaches that got created through time. So some of the key isms that we say or we say approaches under population geography is what we have listed here. Now if you look at the list, you must have heard these words when we were learning about the evolution of geographical thought. So empiricism that is primarily coming from experiences. Positivism prioritizes knowledge through repeatable and verifiable observations, means scientific observations, behavioral, Marxist, structuralist, humanist, postmodernist, poststructuralist, all these approaches approaches came as the important approaches in population geography and study of population as a spatial phenomena as well. So these are the major approaches and to learn about each of them, we have already have a huge playlist in geographical thought. You can go there and watch each of the topic, how it influenced geography. So these are the diverse approaches we need to understand that it also influenced population geography at the same time. Now, what is the scope of population geography when we say it means what? Scope is what are the discourses? What are the ideas, viewpoints, where is it heading? So if you observe the expanding scope of population geography, this table from the Bailey's work will help you understand it. If you observe demographic events and concepts such as migration, fertility, mortality, morbidity, age, marriage and divorce, positionality, these things are the demographic events if you observe population related events across the world and India and what about the indicative population acts or performances for example if you observe residency time, disease, parenting, childhood and several others. Now what are the discourses? This is where the scope lies. What are the newer ideas? What are the field where people can work and the way forward? So it's in migrancy, then you have nomadism, nationalism, ageism and severalism if you say right from family to sexualization of spaces to individualism to secularization to racialization, modernization, colonization. So this is where population geography talks about the relationship of numbers of population with their several other attributes related to the locational factors, spatial dimensions and the interrelation between population and spaces. That's what basically the discourses look into. Now if you observe in 2005 what happened. Publication is very famous in geography in America and it is called geography in America at the dawn of 21st century and why this volume I'm quoting here because this describes the scope of population geography precisely in world around. So what is it? There are six themes which were identified in this particular book and which is precisely the scope in 21st century. So internal migration and residential mobility is one theme that we are looking into in population geography. Then international migration and transnationalism, then immigrant assimilation and adjustment and emergence of ethnic enclaves. That's very important in today's world and regional demographic variations. So again comes regional differentiation or aerial differentiation that we say as major theme still persisting and continuing. And then comes the social theory and population process how society has changed, how discourses have changed across the society and what is happening to the population demographics, right? And then comes the public policy related to these populations. That's where the world is heading towards in terms of population research, right? So these are the major themes if you observe and that's what precisely is the major scope in population geography in 21st century. We could take it from here. Now population geography of India if you observe what we have done in India. A little insight into. So the origin of population geography as a separate topical study in human geography in India can be traced back to 1950s only. Before 1950s population geography was not popular in India. So geographers associated with Punjab University specifically in Chandigarh were supposed to be the pioneers of population research in India. If you know G.S. Gosal's work which was a doctoral thesis called A Geographical Analysis of India's Population. It was published in 1956 and remember it was under the supervision of the great G.T. Trivatha himself. So Trivatha being the kind of father of population geography or modern population geography. Now his disciple is this G.S. Gosal who writes this volume, who does this PhD work which becomes the foundation stone 
So Punjab University is credited in India to become the pioneers of population geography. But at the same time, Aligarh Muslim University, then we had BHU, where great scholars were there, who all contributed. And if you have not watched the contribution of Indian scholars, you can go to the video in Geographical Thought, where I have discussed about the contribution of Indian scholars in geography. So International Institute of Population Sciences, what we say is IIPS, if you know this organization in Mumbai. Formerly, it was known as Demographic Training and Research Center, DTRC till 1970. This was one of the great initiatives to actually do research in population sciences. So it was established in 1956 and remember it was a joint venture or a sponsorship of Sir Dorabji Tata Trust and Government of India and UN. So remember Dorabji Tata's Government of India and United Nations together funded this IIPS and it was considered one of the premier institute and still is the best institute in India if you want to study population geography, population sciences, do population research. Right? So it serves as a regional center for training and research in population studies for economic and social commission for Asia and Pacific that is called ESCAP program. So remember for ESCAP region, IIPS is one of the institution where population geography is being learned, taught, researched, published. So you can look into the website of population geography or population sciences in IIPS and check their website where many other information you can get related to population geography and its dynamics in present scenario. Then further, if if you look into the brief history of census in India, which is very important in terms of when we say population, now it goes back to the Rig Vedic times. Remember 8th to 6th century BC, we find that population count was in vogue in India. Then Arthashastra by Kautilya, we say it is dated back to 3rd century before Christ, right? It prescribed the collection of population statistics as well as a measure of state policy for taxation. Now remember, state policy for taxation was also prevalent in Romans. So if you observe Greeks and Romans, they also did the similar statistics collecting data about population and census was popularized by Romans there and in India, Arthashastra, the Mauryan Empire. So remember, that's very important. Now comes to Middle Ages, Mughal King Akbar. The administrative report, which was there in Aini Akbari, says that comprehensive data was being collected of population, industry, wealth and many other characteristics. So that's in the Middle Ages for you. And right, and right from 1865, where the systematic and modern popular census began during British rule in India, right, the earlier part was non-synchronous in nature. It means just in parts it was as a pilot project in 1865 started and in 1872 different parts of the country it was done. But what about regular census? It started from 1881 onwards. So first synchronous census for India was held in 1881 and since then every 10 year we have the population census done. Now this is the website if you want to check the Office of Registrar General and Census Commissioner of India, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. This website gives you the population related all sorts of data, sample registration, National Register of Indian Citizens, then several other things which you can look into. So if you want more of exploration into population data, you can look into this particular website of Government of India. So now, when we have discussed in details the nature and scope and various approaches of population geography, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different aspects of population geography, demography and several other topics. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning and don't forget to share the videos with others as well.